Hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me check on the audio here. Oh, I'm peeking. Is it working? Okay. Audio seems to be working. Welcome, everybody. We are drawing together. Um, I see that Irene that posted that you finally got your ebony pencil. I apologize for switching that up on you, but I, I, I swear everything we do here can be done in ebony pencil. So we'll get uh, started right now. I just want to check to see if there are any uh, questions here. Um, I'm seeing a little issue with my audio here. So uh, the, the meter that I'm seeing in front of me um, is kind of going bonkers right now. So if there's any issues with the audio, just let me know. Um, but this is where, where we are headed right now. If you are new, this is Drawing Together. I'm Scott, I'm with Artist Network. Um, and we meet every Monday and Wednesday to get together and draw. Uh, you'll find the reference image in the description below. Um, also, you'll find links to artistnetwork.com where you can go to the Drawing Together page. Um, and, oh, so somebody's saying that the, the, it's a little bit glitchy. Okay. Um, let me try something. I'm going to try something. Hold on just a second. And All right, let's see if, if this is working now. I don't know what is going on with the audio. Um, all right, how about this? Maybe this is a little bit better. Um, we're back. All right, um, let me see how this works. What, what's, something's happening on the, in the audio here. It just seems to automatically kind of randomly spike for some reason, and I'm not sure why that is. But I feel like this is probably working better. All right, so we'll dig into it. Um, as you can see here, this is my preparatory drawing. We've got this wonderful dog, French Bulldog, I believe. Um, this was a lot more fun for me than I anticipated. I mean, I think the, the reference image is really awesome, um, but... I, for whatever reason, I think my expectations were a little bit lower than uh, than when I went and went into it, and I found that by the end, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, in part because I found there's so much going on in here in the shadow area, and we haven't really dealt with that issue much in, in recent weeks. The idea that within a shadow you have increasing levels of depth, you have some reflected light, some bounce light, you have deeper parts of the shadow, you've got texture going on. And so that's what really, um, what I found really fascinating. In addition to really the interesting kind of expression, the proportions, things like that, there's a lot going on here in value. So if you're joining um, new, again, you'll find the reference image in the description below. You should be able to bring that up. Um, I am working on the, the rag paper again today. So this is the Hanamula um, rag paper, and I'm using that with the charcoal. But if you just have a regular smooth um, piece of paper and some gra and graphite, if you have an ebony pencil, um, you'll be able to uh, apply those same principles to, to that. Um, I have a vine charcoal. I've got my compressed charcoal pencils. This is a 4B, I believe. I don't know. I uh, kind of worn that down. I think I, I kind of sharpened in over the uh, the exact one, uh, exact, exact pencil. I've got my rubber eraser and my kneaded eraser. I'll be using mostly the kneaded eraser. Um, but for me, what I want to do is just to start by using this soft vine charcoal to block in uh, some of the major forms. And what I, what I did in the preparatory one was try to build through, uh, through this process of looking for the large masses of light and shadow more than anything. Uh, trying to get rid of the white on that background in particular. And what I like about the reference photo, and you, you'll have heard me talk about this before, is that I, one of the things I look for in a reference image is an alternating sequence of light and dark. And so if I pull this down here, you can see that there is this, you know, we have a, a relatively dark background. We have light striking this side. We fall into shadow. And then against that shadow, we have a, a lighter background. So this isn't light back here, but it's lighter than that, that shadow. And that's, again, what I'm looking for. And I want to start by kind of establishing that, that general, um, that general uh, alternating sequence of light and dark. Uh, and so if I think about the dog in a very kind of abstract way, um, we start to see general forms like this, um, where, you know, th th essentially this is how I, I try to look at the reference um, as I start off. So my eye is very out of focus, 
It's um, just looking for large masses of value and trying to think about it in, in abstract terms. And I want to start to break that apart into that. I want to not be thinking about ears, nose, that this is a dog. I want to be looking at it just as um, shapes of light and dark. And this is with, again, with the soft vine charcoal that I know this is all going to be kind of washed away and less permanent. Uh, I think I want to move things over maybe a little bit more. I want to think I want to have the dog a little bit off to the right here. And I'm just trying to look at the shape of the shadows here and I'm getting information on the page. None of this is correct, but I just want to start to see the basic shapes of the shadows. Utilizing the side of the, the, the uh, charcoal rather than the point so that I can think about it in terms of shape rather than in terms of line. And this is generally my process, so if you're new to the series, um, you're going to see me apply this in, in a variety of different uh, subjects as well. So um, this, this is generally my way of working as opposed to starting with an outline and filling it in. I'm squinting at the subject. I'm looking at the, the basic shapes. And I'm getting information on the page uh, from which I can uh, gradually correct. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm not missing any questions. If you do have any questions, I'm going to do my best to, um, to respond to them as I see them. So if you would like me to respond more quickly, I will see that if it is in all caps. Uh, so uh, perhaps type in your question with, in all caps. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of reacting to the forms though. As I'm moving around, I'm, now I'm drawing the ear that's on the right. And as I'm determining that, that high point, I'm looking at the other ear next to it. I'm putting my awareness on other features that are starting to form here. Um, so it, it may seem to you as you're watching this that I'm just kind of moving around the form. But my mind is always putting, being put onto other aspects of the, of the dog here, other areas of that dog. So I can kind of check in and see where am I at? Where am I oriented properly throughout the drawing? And again, just utilizing the side of the, the charcoal more, you can see how it's starting to file down. This was a brand new stick when I started, um, but I'm trying to do that so that it forces me into thinking more about shape than line. And that's sometimes a, a challenging thing for uh, students to confront at the beginning. So if you are kind of new to drawing uh, and you're, you're questioning what that means to be thinking in terms of shape or line, hopefully this is starting to illustrate that. So if I were thinking in line, what I would be doing is following along the contour of the dog and, and creating a contour line drawing within which I would, I would fill with value. And so um, what, instead what I'm trying to do is try to think about the large shapes and almost from working from the inside out, thinking about the large masses of value, light and shadow, and then working out to find that, that, that edge. And to me that uh, works a bit more effectively. Uh, I interpret the lines differently um, in terms of their, their three-dimensional quality, the, the mass that they, they occupy. And so I, I like to get to that point where I'm thinking in terms of light and shadow as quickly as possible. Um, Glory the Bacon Hair. It's a great name. You found this because YouTube has its own particular algorithms. And I'm curious. Hope you stick around. Um, but. We are all here to draw, and it's been a great community here. I don't know if any of you caught the uh, Facebook Live that I did yesterday. That was a lot of fun to exploring that, um, that medium. I hadn't been on Facebook Live before. It was a bit of a, a learning experience, um, but we drew another flower. Check that out there. I know it's, you can still watch it up 
on there. Uh, also, if you haven't joined the community on Artist Network, we've been seeing a lot of um, drawings posted there, and that's been awesome to see the work that everybody's been putting into these exercises. And some of you discovering some of the older ones as well that were on episode, I don't know, we're in the 30s somewhere. So um, we've been doing this for a while and I see a lot of improvement from everybody. So I'm, again, I'm, I'm squinting, closing one eye um, to help me to see, um, you know, see the forms a bit more clearly now I'm just kind of using my fingers here to move the charcoal around. One of the things I love about charcoal is getting messy and um, if that's not for you, I completely understand. Um, it's not, not a medium that works for everybody. So again, this is all stuff that um, you could apply to, um, to graphite as well. If you have an ebony pencil, a carbon pencil, um, you should be able to apply the same concepts here. So here we, I think we, this is a good kind of block in and I can start to now see the, the form emerging there, right? Um, oh, uh, Cindy is asking how the attendance on Facebook, it's been actually went pretty well. We had several thousand uh, people uh, watching at some point. Um, some good comments. I saw many of you that were uh, that were that I, that I see here on YouTube um, were on there as well, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, just kind of seeing where people are at, uh, seeing where we should post these. All right, so I'm feeling a bit more confident at this stage. Now I have things that I can start to adjust in terms of the proportions. You know, I have uh, some light indicators where the nose is going to be. Um, there's the kind of the socket for the eye. You can see I haven't drawn the eye, but instead I'm trying to think about it as a, uh, a volume. There's shadow on this side. There's that, that eye socket, um, and the eye is going to fit somewhere in here. Uh, but I don't want to start to render that. I want to kind of identify where that is relative to kind of the nose and other features. And I could start to do some angle sighting as well. Um, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with that term, there's a few things that you can do to help control the proportions. Uh, there's comparative measuring, which would take the measurement of one element in the drawing and compare it to other things. So if I take the height of the ear, for example, I'm trying to figure out how to do that here. Um, so if I take that from the high point down into the kind of the middle of the ear, I can carry that down across and, and compare that. So if the height of the ear, um, is equivalent, you know, it'll, if I, if I transfer that down, it gets me just below the eye, that same distance, and from there, just below the, uh, the kind of the jaw there. If I take the measurement of the, the top ear here, here and carry that down, it takes me to the, down to the nose, so the height of the ear is equivalent to the, the, the distance between the nose and the base of the ear, and then that's equivalent down, uh, of the distance down here. So from, from this point to this point, this point to this point, this point to this point, they're all essentially equivalent. So those are some of the things I'm looking for when I'm comparative measuring. And then angle sighting takes an angle in uh, in one of the in the in one part of the figure, and it carries it over to the drawing. So I can take that angle, kind of lock my wrist, carry it across, and I can start to indicate what the angles are. I can take that from the central axis of the ear, try to determine what the general angle of the ear should be. I can also do that with the contour. Um, so those are some of the terms that I, I kind of use throughout the, um, the drawing. So if, you're, if you have any questions about that, let me know and I can try to clarify a bit more. But those are the two tools that I use to control the proportions a bit more. Um, and one of the questions I get frequently is why don't I use a grid or why don't I trace the image? Um, and, and you can certainly do whatever you'd like. You know, whatever serves the drawing, go for it. Um, now for me, my, the objective is to improve my skills with drawing and in, in particular so that I can apply it to my plain air paintings. When I'm out on location, I want to be able to interpret the proportions of whatever's in front of me on the page um, or on the canvas. And so I won't have that ability to grid off the, the canvas or grid off the image and then transfer it over. Um, so I need to develop that skill and hone that skill a bit more. Um, if this was about creating a drawing to be used, um, you know, as, as a commission or something like that. If I really needed to make this look correct uh, for something, 
uh, then I might use that tool. I might use tracing or, or a grid to make sure I get those proportions right. I might work from an image like I'm doing now. Um, but again, this is all about me needing to practice um, the skill of translating um, proportions from something that's in front of me onto the page. So now I've switched to the pencil, as you can see. This is a more per permanent mark. Um, and I am just trying to block in some of those values. Uh, and, and I can start to refine the, the, the forms as I'm starting to see that. You can start to see this three-dimensional form. And hopefully in this, you can see, um, it's almost like we're looking through you know, foggy glass um, or something like that at, at, the, at the image. So I just want to lay down the char charcoal in a more kind of permanent way. And, um, and I'm going to continue to refine it. And what I can feel now with this, um, with this charcoal pencil, it's picking up the vine charcoal. It's kind of scraping it off the surface a bit because that's a lighter um, material. And it's depositing a, uh, the, the compressed charcoal. And it's kind of sitting on top of the, of the paper right now. And so if you're, if you're noticing, I'm using the pencil in an overhand grip so that I can engage the side of the charcoal rather than the point. Um, if I use the point, what that does is it creates a more permanent mark. It kind of embosses uh, the paper and, and it creates these marks that are more difficult to adjust later. So I'm trying to uh, stay um, with the side of the pencil as much as possible, kind of scrapes across the surface, um, squinting, closing one eye. And as I'm making my marks, as I'm working in this area here, this is the shadow underneath the eye, I'm mentally I'm checking in to other points. So checking into both of the ears, the nose, some of the, the corners of the, the object to make sure that I'm kind of in, this, in the right spot. Um, the more you say fixed on a, um, on a particular area, the more trouble you're going to find yourself in and it starts to distort. And this is something I explained in the... Um, in the le lesson yesterday on Facebook is that uh, it's my understanding that our brain is designed and our, perception, our perceptual system is designed uh, to track movement. It's primed to track movement more than a fixed object. And as it were, our eyes are always moving around. And so when we, get, when we become fixed on something, it, our brain continues to move and you'll often find uh, it's difficult to stay focused on something or the object in front of you might appear to grow or, or shrink. And you can try that in um, just by looking in the mirror and just focus on your nose. And as you do that, it'll, you'll seem to, to perceive your nose to be changing shape right in front of you. And that's because your brain is, just a, is used to compensating for movement and, and constantly shifting around. And I try to replicate that in the drawing as well, not to get too fixed on a single object too much. I want my eye to be moving around and constantly be checking in on other aspects of the drawing. All right, uh, just checking here for any questions here. Um, let's see, so I'm getting some good feedback here. I say once the compressed charcoal is down, is it difficult to lift up? Um, it is. It can be a, difficult. Uh, on this rag paper that I've got, it it's a bit more forgiving. I like the way it accepts the charcoal, so you can see that it's holding the charcoal pretty well. Um, but I can also lift up pretty well just with the uh, with the kneaded eraser here. Um, you may have difficulty depending on the paper that you've got. Um, you know, if you use a watercolor paper, for example, that's designed to hold watercolor, and I find that it just kind of smudges the charcoal more. Uh, than, than allowing it to lift off. Um, but that's again, that's because it's designed to hold watercolor, not charcoal. Um, so it, uh, think, think about the paper. If you're having a hard time lifting the charcoal, uh, it could just be the paper itself. But again, using the charcoal on the side um, is uh, um, it, it generally more effective. It, it sits on top of the paper a bit more I need to, uh, this is all very subtle in here, but I want to start to refine that, that form. So doing some negative drawing, 
um, thinking about the shapes around the features here. So as I'm drawing the ear, I'm doing that by looking at the shape of the space behind it and around it. And so because I'm using the charcoal on its side, it's, it's allowing this texture to form. There's little pits and divots in this that aren't accepting the charcoal. And that's affecting how I perceive some of the shapes and values. So now I'm going to use my shading stump and I'm going to start to just kind of fill in some of these areas. And as I've mentioned before in, 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 this, in this whole series of drawings, whatever tool you have in your hand, you, you're always contributing to the form. So even, this is, even though this is a blending tool, this isn't just about making those values smooth. This is an opportunity to refine that form. So I want to be kind of sculpting with this tool. And the same with the eraser as well. It's always an opportunity to refine the form. Uh, so what I, I just caught myself there. I was moving parallel to the edge of the ear, which I think is going to give me trouble in the end. So I want to move to a perpendicular mark uh, that will, I think will ultimately create a greater sense of depth. Um, when our eyes, we perceive that, that direction of the, the marks and um, we tend to make decisions about where those objects are in space based on the direction of the marks. So if, with the, in the background, if I run these horizontally and then the ears move in a different direction, um, it's more likely that our, eyes, our mind is going to perceive that as uh, two different objects, different parts of space. If I, if I have all those lines align with one another, another um, then there's a, there's a chance that our mind will perceive that background as actually being part of the ear. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just kind of getting in here. Um, and one of the things I like about using the, the shading stump to refine these edges is that it, it's a, it offers a very light touch that, um, that is just a bit more sensitive, more subtle than the, the charcoal pencil. Um, and at this stage, I don't want lines to be uh, present. I don't want contour lines to be something major in there. Um, so I'm just kind of thinking again about the negative space, drawing the shape around, around the side of the head. My eyes moving back and forth very quickly here. Uh, how do you like charcoal paper or mixed media paper? You know, it all depends on uh, kind of the brand. Uh, and I'm not going to say that one brand is better than another because, you know, what works for one person may not work for another person. But generally, if you get something that is designed for charcoal, um, it's going to work better than one that's not. Uh, mixed media paper is also can be good. And, and there's a lot of variety in how um, those mixed media papers accept various mediums. So sometimes um, it's when it's designed to kind of hold everything, um, it may not hold any one medium, you know, particularly better than another. But sometimes it really does a great job. Um, and, and in general, you learn how to adapt to whatever surface you've got. Um, what I love about the rag paper, though, is that it's, it's, it's cotton uh, rather than wood, and it has a, just a different tooth to it. Um, and that, and when, you, when you erase, you're kind of filing away. You're sanding down that top layer. So it... Um, you can get that back to that brighter white a little bit more effectively, I feel. Um, so I'm just gonna, just using the shading stump again, I'm trying to refine that form a bit more as well. At least so I'm thinking about the proportions and making adjustments to them. So like this edge here needs to be cleaned up, but as long as this general shape is, is looking good, then I'm, um, I think I'm all right, so. Now I'm just going through the drawing, kind of refining some of the edges. I love this shadow area here. Just a light touch, just kind of feathering it up to create a gradient there. And, and as we go through, one of the things we'll talk about too is, is changing the direction of the marks to reflect the flow of the texture, that especially that there's, there's a, a changing direction of the fur here. And so you can use marks that reflect the flow of that hair 
And I'm kind of doing that intermittently here. And as we go through and refine it, we're going to really start to pay attention to the direction of the mark so that we create uh, an expression of the, that texture. So let me see here. I'm starting to, to see the form of the eye. I want to keep my eyes blurred here. I want my vision to be intentionally out of focus so that I, I see the overall value and shape. I need to check. What I have in front of me is the, is the image with the camera that's above me. And that's a little, it's smaller and it's vertical. So I can actually see the correct proportions because what's happening here is when, as I'm looking down at it at an angle, I'm, I'm adjusting the perspective a bit to compensate for that angle. So I need, to, uh, I need to continually check. And I think that's healthy for you to do as well. Set it up across the room, set it up at a distance to see how things are taking shape. Um, and if the, uh, if the proportions and the perspective are all looking good. Because you can be really surprised sometimes by what is actually happening on the page after, because we, we tend to compensate um, when we, uh, for proportions and perspective when we, when we work at an angle like this. All right. So I think this is a generally a, a good approximation of what I'm actually seeing because because of, again my vision is blurred intentionally. I do probably do you know three quarters or more of the drawing with my eyes intentionally out of focus, and uh, and I find that that becomes helpful interpreting values. So starting to come together. And again, as you can see, I'm trying to move throughout the whole drawing. I'm not fixing on one spot here at this point. Unfortunately, this is not my dog. Um, so I, I found this one on a, a reference image site called Pixabay, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, there's a, there's a, a nice form to it that I that I enjoy, but this hopefully again I see a lot of people posting kind of pet portraits seems to be a thing that a lot of people are interested in, and hopefully this gives you some ideas uh, for your own kind of pet portrait. Uh, so thinking back and forth between negative drawing, positive drawing, um, there are some adjustments that I'm going to need to make as I go through, but I feel like for the most part the big forms are there, so now we can start to actually move on to kind of finishing stages in, uh, in, the, in the process. Let's see here. One of the things to be mindful of is that we know the snout is black, right? But there is a light and shadow to it. Um, and really try to evaluate, if you squint your eyes, it helps to try to evaluate the value relationships between this and this. Um, I want to just to start to suggest the the space between the eyes and the ears. So what I had done is I'd drawn the ears, drawn the eyes, but I haven't really spent much time in that forehead between. Um, and so I need to start to look at that. And this is a way to double check those proportions. So as I focus my attention there, I can make sure that everything is lining up as it should in this forehead area. And if I'm off, if, if it's not fitting, properly, that's an indicator that I need to go back and double check the proportions of the ears or the, the nose. So this is all you know similar to working in the portrait that I did on Monday. And I have to thank you all for that on Monday. You were incredibly tolerant and helpful. <laughs> that was a very challenging one, uh, working with that portrait. Um, and it was really great to see everybody's suggestions. Everybody was very um, respectful and helpful. Uh, to me, and I found a lot of things that could be improved in my drawing as a result of that. So I always encourage that if you are new um, and you have suggestions if something is looking off, I always welcome suggestions on how to uh, to improve that. And we like to phrase them as observations. What are you seeing? Is that you know is is something off? Can it? Um, are you? 
uh, what, other, what suggestions might you have, etc. So uh, what I'm doing is angle sighting the, the eyes, trying to find that general angle, carry that across, make sure that I'm in, uh, I'm in alignment. I think I'm in pretty good shape there. Okay. Here we go. The corner of front eye in proportion with the rest of the nose is off. This right in here, I think is what you're probably referring to. Okay, so that's gonna be something that I need to take and take a look at as I go. Um, so I've, I've got this kind of general area in here um, that I'll need to go through and refine. Um, those are all good observations. Let's see. All right, how do I want to do this? I think maybe what I want to do is kind of work my way from the top down. Um, all right, so what I'll do is kind of use my eraser to kind of clean up the, the shape of the ear. Just, just a very light touch, and I can kind of I can squeeze it into this kind of sharp, sharper ridge, and that will help me to um, create the shape I need. And so I've kind of overstated that edge. Um, now I can come back in with the, the, the pencil and refine it a bit farther. I want to be careful with my marks though. I don't want that line to become too strong. I want to be careful not to have marks that parallel the ear too much. So I want to, I'm changing the direction of my marks. Right in there, let's see. And this is where, you know, working with it taped down to the table is a bit of a challenge, but um, I've been finding it generally, it's been helpful. It's in, it encourages, encourages me to uh, find new ways of manipulating the pencil. So, um, you know, if I, if I wasn't filming, if I didn't have this taped down, I would be um, kind of rotating the paper to try to find the right angle but because it's locked down, I need to think kind of creatively about how I move my hand. Adele is asking if it's easier to draw an animal versus a human. I would say yes, in a way, um, you know, but it all depends. You know, I, it's something that I don't spend a lot of time doing. I don't, actually, I don't draw animals or humans a whole lot. Um, and, and so every time I do, it's a big challenge because um, I just don't have kind of a muscle memory or a mental process kind of locked down for working through a, a portrait. You know, there are a lot of great portrait artists out there that they've committed themselves to drawing portraits. And so for them, it's, it's not necessarily that it's easier or harder. It's just become, there are certain things that are more accessible um, and throughout the process. Getting the proportions right, you might happen more quickly. For me, it's a battle um, because I... Um, I haven't spent as much time really considering the proportions of a, of, of a portrait. Um, and, but what, what is at stake with a drawing, a drawing a human is really capturing that, that spirit and the essence of that person. Uh, we often, you know, we know what a person, who a person is and what they, what it kind of feels like to be in their presence. But we often don't spend a whole lot of time analyzing the proportions or why we understand that we're looking at a particular person. And so um, it's very easy for us to know when we're off, but we're, it's very difficult to know how we should correct it. Um, with a pet portrait, you know, I think we're, it's a little bit more forgiving sometimes, but you know, if you've got your own pet, you know, you, you know that pet and you know what, what makes that particular cat or dog or whatever um, unique to other, other um uh, you know, others out there. So if you're, it's, again, it's one of those situations where we're more likely to know when we're off, but not know how to fix it or not know why it's off. If that makes sense. All right. So I'm just using that shading stump in here, kind of refining that edge, starting to refine some of these forms. And what's nice is that, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be a super sharp edge. Um, uh, I got a question about whether or not the, sh the space between the ears is sufficient. Um, and that, that I think that might be adjust need to be adjusted. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, doing that negative drawing in there will be helpful. I feel like I'm pretty close, but I need to cut into this ear a little bit. Uh, 
Um, but that's, uh, it kind of gets to the heart of, of drawing. A lot of, a lot of the drawing process is about getting the mind right. Uh, because we spend, you know, generally uh, in our daily lives, understanding why we are seeing what we're seeing is not all that, that critical. We don't need to know when we look at a human, how do we know that's a human? Like we just do. We just know that it's a human. Our brain and our subconscious is kind of doing that for us. Um, but when you're drawing, you start to have to be, you start to become more critical and, under, and start to think more critically about, well, how do I know? What is that? What does it actually look like? What assumptions am I making about the subject? And in particular, with drawing, we um, we start very early on creating our own visual system and, and symbolism for things. You know, we say we draw a smiley face by drawing a circle, two dots, and a, and a curve for the mouth, right? And that becomes our symbol for a person and for a head. Um, and we do that with all sorts of things. And often what we find ourselves doing is actually drawing from those preconceived notions about what something should look like or how it should be drawn rather than what's in front of us. And so a lot of what we're doing in drawing is, especially if you're drawing to, for something to, be, to look realistic, is to start to break that down um, and really look critically at the particular forms of, of, the, uh, of the object or the subject. All right, so I'm feeling a little bit better about these. And, and then as always, I mentioned this in, in many other videos, is you're going to define for yourself what the tolerance is in terms of proportions, it, you know, it, how accurate it needs to be. Um, and we talked about this a lot in the portrait one on Monday. You know, how critical is, is, that, is it for that portrait to be a person versus the person? Uh, and uh, again, that's something that you're going to need to define for yourself, you know, what that looks like. And so I'm feeling like I'm feeling pretty confident in those those ears at this point, um, and they may still be off. So then I have to ask myself: Do do I need to go back in and fix them, or should I move on to the next uh, next phase here? And I think I'm just going to continue to move on, I'm laying down some charcoal in here, and then we really lose this edge along in this side. So it's, this is going to need uh, it's going to require particular attention. Um, just gonna move over here because I need to clear my mind. <laughs> gonna shake my head out a little bit and do something that doesn't require focus and attention. Still contributing to the drawing, but I need to come back to this with kind of a fresh, uh, fresh mind. Because now that we're moving onto the stage where we're refining, I'm, I see myself kind of locking in on certain areas, and I know I run the risk of losing sight of the whole. All right, this is, this is a fun area here. So um, looking at this lower portion of the ear, I love that, that kind of alternating sequence of light and dark, how that edge right in here is defined by that thin, sharp light, and it transitions into dark up here. And I need to erase out some of the light down in here. And so, as, as I said earlier, you know, you're, you always have an opportunity to contribute to the form. So even though this is an eraser, an eraser isn't just about um, removing things. It's not about correcting mistakes entirely. Um, it's an opportunity to refine that form. Let's see here. I think there's... A little bit of light coming in here, but I need to make sure that it's not too bright. So just kind of tapping with the needed eraser, lifting a little bit of light here in the ear, and then I can go in here and add this deeper part of the shadow in here. Um, and so I can kind of I can suggest the fur in that ear by doing some negative drawing, kind of taking these darker areas and pushing into that lighter area, and then in here it gets darker again. So I'm trying to move my marks in the direction of the, kind of the grain of the fur.
All right, and then looking also for areas where, it, you know, there's light here, but there's also areas where it's lighter than others, so it's a little bit lighter right in here, and that'll help to create the shape of that, that ear. Come back into here. Doing some negative drawing, deeper part of that shadow. So kind of keep in mind too, as you're going along, our, we're constantly calibrating to uh, the, uh, constantly calibrating to the values. And so, you know, I have these dark areas here and my mind starts to perceive that as, as the blackest black. But in reality, I can actually go a little bit darker. Um, and so just kind of be mindful of that. Uh, same with the, the light areas. Yeah, I'm seeing some comments about the eyes. Uh, you know, kind of keep those in mind. Um, I need to double check where they are. I kind of have them roughed in and I'm kind of working my way down the drawing right now. Um, and so I have an opportunity to kind of shift those around as we need to. Um, let me see here. Now this is really kind of an interesting form that I want to kind of lock in. And then what I'm looking at is what happens along this edge um, because we get this really deep shadow here and as we, fall, as we follow it up the edge, now we have the ear being light against that darker background. So I'm trying to understand what that transition looks like and that's ultimately going to bring life to that, that edge. Uh, let me see. See how if I, if I can refine that a little bit. Yeah, we've got some people that like to make comments that are unhelpful. So we're gonna have those. It is what it is. We've got a great community here though. So, um, all right, now I'm gonna continue to move down in here. And now I might actually get into the eyes. So what I wanna do is start to triangulate and lock in on where they are. I don't know, hopefully I'm not leaning into the shot too much. Um, so as I'm working on, on, on these features in here, before I start to make the mark, I'm doing a quick check-in to see where I'm at. Um, and so I've got the ears here, of course, kind of locked in. I've got suggestions of the other eye. I've got some of the contour of the edges established. And so I'm just doing kind of a quick check in. I, this is gonna be my area of focus, but before I commit to that, I need to double check to make sure that other areas are, are uh, feeling pretty good. And I can see, let's see, I'm gonna bring this eye up just a little bit. Now I'm looking at that shape. There's a really interesting form now it's a little bit thicker on this inside edge uh, because we're at kind of a three-quarter view. So, uh, and then the, that upper eyelid, we, we're kind of seeing into it on the inside, and then as we come around it, we're seeing on the outside of that, that eye socket. It's that spherical form. I want to I want to kind of be treating this like a, a, a like a microcosm of the, the the drawing as a whole, in that I'm I'm trying to see the general the, the major values first, and I'll go back in and add more detail, and then I want to see how much detail is really necessary, what becomes distracting, etc. I'm kind of losing some of the detail in the reference image here. So I have to need to really kind of look at the, the shadow. So I can see this general shadow form, but within that there are also areas where it gets even darker. Still utilizing the side of the pencil, kind of laying down some of that charcoal. Um, before I refine that, I want to move now across, kind of work my way across. As I'm making my marks, again, I'm doing a mental check-in to see where I am um, in, in relation to the uh, other aspects of the um, other aspects of the, the dog here. All 
I see lots of comments coming in. I can't quite keep up with all of them, but again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to call them out in all caps. Uh, Adele, the angle of the ear you just did is wrong, so is the shadow, so that throws out the front eye. Let me see. I think you're you're right in general, yeah. Need to bring this, it's a bit more of an angle here. And that, that's a good point because then, like I was saying, then if I'm basing everything off of that ear and that ear is incorrect, then um, I'm gonna be in trouble. So I'm going to quick do a, an angle sighting check-in. That feels more correct. That feels more correct. So when I compare it to that, it seems like it's it seems like it's working. So I'm going to take this, the width of the ear here. Ah, okay, yeah, so I think that feels like a little bit better. So these subtle changes can make a big uh, difference overall. Okay. Can you please explain the difference between a charcoal pencil and an ebony pencil? So it, this is charcoal um, that I'm working with, and it is it is charcoal, so it's a natural material. You know, it's wood that's essentially been fired in a kiln, um, and it it allows for a greater range in values. I can get a much deeper, darker mark um, than with the ebony pencil. An ebony pencil is a graphite product that is very, very soft, um, so it's it's closer to charcoal, but it's still much more silvery, more aligned with, uh, with actual graphite. So I wanna double check the angle of the ear, of the eyes, let me see, I'm gonna take the distance between the eyes. So what I'm seeing here is I'm taking the distance between the eyes here, comparing that to the height of the ears, and I can see that at this point here along the ear, it's the same distance as the distance between the eyes. So then if I can compare that here, I can take that distance, carry it up, and I'm pretty close. And then I can also compare that to the distance between the ear. So if I take that distance between the eyes, uh, flip it up and compare it to this ear here, it should take me to about this point in the, in the ear. which is pretty close and it might, looks like it's a little bit, a little bit high. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of lower this down a little bit. Maybe that ear is a bit too, uh, too big. And there's a slight angle here. So then the forehead now shrinks just slightly here. All right. I'm going to get back to that. Uh, I'm going to get back to this eye down in here now. It's going to work in my way down. So I appreciate all the suggestions. Um, feel free to call them out. That's what, that's, that's what drawing together is all about. We're here drawing together. And if I was drawing with you in person, you know, these are the types of things that we would um, be talking about. I could, you know, ask questions. Hey, what do you think about these proportions? Does this look off to you? What are you seeing? Um, and I think, you know, giving and receiving feedback is something that takes a little bit of time to, um, and, and practice to, to get good at. Um, and, and it all leads, it's all designed to help you become better in whatever way you determine. You know, so, uh, you know, I know there's, there are a lot of artists out there that would look at this drawing and say, I, would, well, I, that, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, and that's totally fine. Everybody has a different way of thinking about art. Um, hopefully this just kind of expresses my particular take on it. All right, so I kind of have those starting to get locked in. I can start to refine a little bit here, drawing that, that eyelid being dark is really kind of a fascinating feature.
sorry, I'm just uh, kind of thinking through this. I'm finding myself needing to focus on this form a little bit. So that's what's happening, actually. What I need to do is I'm going to use this shading stump to kind of think through the structure of the head a little bit. And then adjust this. And then this is constant back and forth as we continually adjust. So again, sorry, I'm just needing to focus right here, so. And being charcoal, I can build it up, take it down. I'm going to come back and finish those eyes off a little bit later. I'm going to see how this holds up in terms of proportions. So hopefully what I kind of convey in this whole series is that, you know, it's art is a practice. You, um, and it, there's, you know, never really a moment where you ultimately master it. You know, you, you get to a point where you're, you're feeling better about it, but then you're going you're gonna to reach another point where you want to grow in a different way. Um, and that's what's happening here. You know, I may hit it, I may miss, but when you're drawing, you know, it's, there's, what, what, I, what I try to encourage in my students is to, you know, when you're, when we're critique, critiquing a work, when you feel like you're pretty, pretty close to done with it, try to identify two things, what's working well and what's not working well. And it's really important that you think about both of those things, in my opinion, because it's easy to either dwell on the mistakes, and that can become demotivating, or, um, or become kind of fixated on the successes and ignore some areas that are that need that could be improved. Um, and identifying what is going well is often I find uh, where students struggle. Um, it's I see a lot of students become really hard on themselves, expecting it to be better. You know, just they want it to be, you know, 100% perfect. Um, and and it's possible that in that drawing, you know, 99% of the drawing is actually really strong. There's just you know, a few little areas that are off, but that becomes the center of focus in their minds. And so, um, but you want to know what you're doing right because then you can intentionally carry that over into the next drawing, um, and then then identify what areas you could be improving on and try to improve on that for the next one. And then you're going to do another drawing, and that is going to be uh, really strong in one way but maybe less so in another. And so I think it's, it's helpful for me to at least to see uh, where, um, where, is, where are things working effectively and where can they be improved. And then the next time I, I do it, I try to, um, try to fix it. So uh, there's going to be er er errors in this. There's going to be areas for me to improve, and I want that um, because that's what motivates me to do the next one. Uh, I... It's this kind of reward system where you're going to do something that's working well and that's going to be motivating. And then there's going to be something you're like, oh, I didn't quite get that. Maybe I can go to this next time. I can pass this level essentially in the, the game of the drawing. Um, so hopefully, hopefully there's something that's, that I can improve on at the end of this. That's what I want. And I know I already can see areas that I think I can be, um, that I think I might be able to work on. You know, I'm feeling like that ear is a bit, a bit heavy. Sometimes drawings just don't come together. And I love that moment in the drawing. And I talked a bit about this in the last episode. Is I love that, that ugly duckling stage that every drawing goes through where you feel like it's just not coming together. And this could all just fall apart. And I, I really enjoy that, that experience of getting through that. Um, and then after a while, you just start to expect it and... You kind of look forward to, to identifying that stage because then you know you're going to kind of pull out of that. So one of the things I'm seeing in this eye over here is this, this compound curve. 
where it's generally spherical, but as we come down in, into this section here on the inside, all of a sudden that curve turns a little bit. There's a, an, an inversion of that, that curve. So it's not a perfect sphere. And I think that, that helps to, um, to see the shape of the eyes. Let's see. That's interesting. So Prania has an interesting comment about the science teachers saying that uh, we should not include negative comments. But I think that's, to me, I think that's uh, an interesting point. There's a difference between kind of negative comments and identifying what can be improved. I guess I, for me, I don't, inv I don't include um, thoughts about what can be improved as something that's negative. Um, but I, I mean, I do, I do agree that I think it's important to identify, you know, become positive um, in your work. But um, perhaps it's just a difference in, in how we think about what a positive comment and a negative comment could be. It's a good, good uh, thing to kind of think about. And it all depends on, on what's serving you. You know, I've had areas, uh, you know, throughout my career where I've been more confident in my work and then areas where I, I just, I feel like nothing is going to go right. Um, and, you know, you, uh, it, but in the end, it's just what, you know, whatever keeps you going. So I'm just using my kneaded eraser to kind of pick up some of the light there. Um, it's not kind of refining some of the shapes around the eyes. I kind of locked that in now, so hopefully it's right. I feel like what I've, what I've got here is I've overstated this portion of the ear. I keep coming back to this area, and I think that's what's bothering me. I need to make that a bit thinner right in here. All right. Mohammed, you're asking, why can't I draw like that? Well, hopefully you want to draw how you want to draw, how you draw. Um, the, I have been drawing for, you know, I didn't, I, I started training specifically as an artist um, back in 1996. So I've been drawing pretty consistently since then. Um, to kind of, and I've been teaching throughout many, for many of those years. Um, so hopefully that kind of puts that into perspective. And sorry, I'm just kind of thinking through about this one area right in here, but um, it really is a skill, you know, that you develop. It's, you know, some people kind of pick that skill up faster, but the idea that it exists for some person, for some people and not for others, um, I, I don't think I can get on board with that idea. I believe everybody can learn the skills as a sequence of thoughts that, that you train your mind to go through and to focus on. And, you know, like I said, for some people, it, it comes a bit more naturally, um, just like, you know, math and science, music, etc. It comes more naturally because our brains just kind of go to that that way of processing information more readily but um but yeah just over time once you understand how your brain processes information uh, you can ultimately learn to create any type of art you want all right so now i'm thinking about the the nose here and i can start to refine this shape so what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to think more about the general value here. So in the nose, it's going to, there's going to be a um, kind of a highlight, a shadow area, and then a, a, a local value, an overall value. And I'm going to be focusing on that overall value. I'm going to try to look for those shapes here. Um, and so I may have to lay down some charcoal, and I can move it around using the shading stump. And so what I'm, what I'm doing is going for kind of a middle, middle gray, and then in certain areas I'm going to pull it out with the eraser. In other areas I'm going to darken with the charcoal. And I want to start to see the forms here. Uh, 
and kind of drawing in those nostrils, giving me some orientation points. And I'm trying to really just observe those that particular shape. One of the things I've, um, I've talked with students about is to try to overcome an instinct to draw the nostrils as either ovals or circles, unless they actually are. So try to try to perceive the specific shape. And so in this case, there's kind of like these rounded crescent forms, and each one is actually a little bit different. So I'm trying to, as I'm, as I'm working on this area, thinking about the cross contour. So when we talk about that, what a cross contour is, is, oh, actually I'll define what a contour is. A contour is, an, is a, the, the outer line that defines a three-dimensional object. And the cross contour are marks within that form that help to define that three-dimensional con uh, um, content. So um, when I'm in here, I'm working with the cross contour. I'm trying to think about how does that, that shape actually flow as though this is a three-dimensional object on the page that I can kind of wrap around here. As I come up here, I can start to look at this shadow. And drawing is one of those things that I believe everybody should do. Um, just like, you know, dancing, singing, things like that. You know, we all do, you know, when, at the point at which you become a professional, then maybe your relationship with it changes and the relationship with your audience changes. But for me, it's a way of processing the, the world around you um, that is a really helpful skill. And what I think can be sometimes uh, challenging is uh, for students to, uh, in, in, or anybody to, feel like once you once you draw, if you enjoy drawing, that then you have to define yourself as an artist and all the things that come along with it, all those preconceived notions about what uh, an artist is. There's the, the the concept of the starving artist, or you know the the, the artist like uh, you know the, the famous artist like a Van Gogh you know, saying that, you know, you've got to suffer or be tortured in some way, or you're maybe you're, it's not appreciated in your lifetime, that kind of thing. We have all of these kind of cultural um, uh, narratives that we tell ourselves about what an artist means. And for some reason, we, we tend to apply that to ourselves as soon as we find ourselves enjoying art. And I feel like that can sometimes be destructive. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, just drawing for the sheer enjoyment um, is a really powerful thing and especially drawing on location you know doing you know doing some urban sketching or uh, you know plein air painting things like that um, working from a still life doing a portrait of somebody that you know um, it, it has a way of locking itself into the mind um, that I feel like you, you become more present in that moment uh, when making art about it So hopefully, like if you find yourself kind of struggling with that, um, and kind of the, the the kind of cultural associations with being an artist or labeling yourself as an artist, um, and I think it all starts with just enjoying what you're doing. So now I'm looking at these, these darker areas. Since I have this general value here, I can go back in and look for the darker shapes and really study the edges and see where is the line darker or is there a line, you know, the alternating sequence of light and lights and darks. So as I'm working into these, some of these creases that get a little bit darker, I found myself creating these lines that follow along that. I want to be careful about that because then it's going to start to read like a line rather than a thin shadow. So instead I want to create them as, um, I want to kind of create these shorter wiggles 
um, that our, our brain is going to interpret more as thin shadows as we do that. So be careful with lines. Our, we have a, this kind of inherent ability to understand that a line is a representation of the edge of an object. Um, and so when we, when we see lines, it's often an indicator that one object is ended and another is beginning. Um, and when that happens in the interior of a form, that's when it starts to break down. So I want to make sure that these thin thing, these thin marks here read as thin shadows rather than lines. Let's suggest uh, some of the texture here. So utilizing the side of the pencil is a, an effective way of helping to break that. And so if you've got a if you've got a mark that runs down this way, instead of drawing it this way, kind of I visualize a path and create it. With, with squiggles that move in, in a perpendicular motion. All right, and so one of the things that we can now start to do is pull out some of the highlights. Um, so looking at this, there's an area right here in the center where the light tends to be a little bit stronger. And I'm just gonna tap with the kneaded eraser uh, in those areas. And then right here along this edge, and that helps to create that, that look that there's kind of a flatness to the, the, the snout. So I can kind of pull up along in here. Looks like a bit too strong, so I can smudge that out. It's one of the things I love about the kneaded eraser is that irregular quality to it. And then let's see the the that lower lip there has got a, again it's got a little bit of light catching on the top and then along that turn there's a little bit of light catching in along here I want to what I'm going to do is some negative drawing down in here darken in that background kind of fade it up a little bit because then the um, there's a little bit of light coming in under here that I want to capture. So I need to figure out where that, where do I start? Right around here. Just kind of erasing out the shape of that light, kind of doing some negative drawing to establish that light under there. And I can come back in and add some of the, the shadow shapes in there. All right, so how are we feeling here? Everybody with me so far? How can you get the fur to look more like fur? We're gonna focus actually on that more in this section here, um, especially in that, that shadow area. Um, Noel, currently doing anime, that's excellent. That is a, a really fun um, kind of genre of, of art. Okay, so what I wanna do is kinda of take a mental note now of what's happening in the structure of the head. So as we, as, we, as we look at each of these sections, you can see how the hair kind of flows around the structure, and that's what's gonna to help to simulate the texture. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, kind of pull out some of the light shape here with the eraser, and I can start to make that eraser kind of flow in the direction of the grain of the fur. And then when I come back in with the, the charcoal, I can use my hatch marks that follow in that direction. And that helps to simulate it. Um, and so I, I like to use the side of the pencil for this. Uh, so if, it, cause there's, if you use it on, utilize it on its side, you can see how it's picked up charcoal here. There's always kind of a sharp edge uh, on that, the cone of the, uh, of the charcoal. So I'm going to start to kind of build up value in here. Kind of suggest the, the grain of that fur. And I don't want this to become too dark because I know there are areas in here where the shadows get even darker. Uh, so I just want kind of a nice gray. And maybe in here, if I, if I switch to this tripod grip, I can start to really kind of define some of that fur right in here because there's that particular way that the light is catching 
catching that fur right there. So hopefully this is helping to suggest the fur more than really render it. You want to try to avoid getting in there with individual individual marks. This is just a very light touch that I'm doing, especially with the charcoal. It doesn't take a whole lot to make to make that mark um, visible. But a lot of what creates the texture is the the quality of the reflection. How is the light reflecting off the surface? Because this is fur, that reflection gets scattered. If this was a glass dog, you know, then we would see very sharp, crisp reflections. Um, and so look at those edges and see, you know, how those, how the light is really bouncing off of the forms. And like I said, if you kind of get that, then that starts to become a, a cue to the viewer that this is something that is soft. And then our mind starts to fill in that the rest of it. All right, so I'm going to keep the values fairly light in here. I mean, this is a solid kind of value. We could do some negative drawing in here. Um, And kind of block that in. Uh, the, the direction of the fur changes. There's a kind of an inner fold right in here. I'm going to change the direction of the marks a bit. Um, and then once I've blocked in that major shadow shape, if you have a hard time seeing it, try squinting your eyes. But try to block in this major shadow shape. See how it kind of wraps up here on the edge of the dog. Uh, so here I'm going to, one of the things I like to do is try to pantomime, try to practice the edge, seeing the path, and then once I see it in my mind, uh, build a shape by, by using perpendicular marks that lead up to that edge. Um, let me see, so right in here actually what I want to do is kind of blur that out a little bit. I need to anchor this dog a little bit. Maybe just a quick suggestion of the back there. All right, so now as we're blocking in that shape, now I can go back in and find the deeper parts of the folds. So there's one major one that falls along here. So I'm not making that mark. I'm just visualizing the path, uh, kind of getting, getting ready for it. And now I'm going to create that, that mark by uh, as an accumulation of marks that 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 build onto that line. So you can see how I'm, I'm kind of taking little stabs at it. So I'm kind of visualizing where it needs to go and dropping that line in there. Um, and then what it shows me is that I think I rendered this light perhaps a bit too large. So I can take uh, another stab at it. As I blend with the shading stump, be thinking about the, the grain of that fur. those kind of short wiggles there. And I'm going to refine this, refine that light that's reflecting on there. That kneaded eraser just kind of picks up the, that light a little bit. Oh, and there's this wonderful little light catching right in here, that triangular shape. So I've overstated it, and I can come back in and refine that down. So now I can move on to that next fold right in here. So that, that edge helps to de really define it as fur. And then using these kind of short squiggly marks can be helpful. It gets dark right in under here. 
little bit lighter on here. There's some bounce light happening where that some of that sky is reflecting off the back of his head. And then I need to observe the, the lines here. So utilizing the side of the pencil now, instead of that point, that helps to make a more natural looking shadow. And it doesn't, it's not as easily read as a line. Just kind of smoothing this out. Again, thinking about the grain, trying to allow the, allow the marks to, imagine this is a three dimensional object and I'm kind of flowing over the, the contour of it. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of how to suggest the fur. Really pay attention to the edges where the shadow and the highlight meet. And that's another indicator of, of um, texture. Right in here, it gets, it gets a rather, there's a rather deep form. Oh, there's a little bit of light catching right in here. So I overstated it. I'm going to cut back into that a little bit more. Gonna pull up some of that, that reflected light right in here. All right, so what do you think? How's this all going? Anybody have any additional questions? Um, hopefully I didn't uh, miss anything important there. Kind of coming in quickly for a while, so... And I think we're just about done. Um, you know, I don't. I think I can. You know, continue to add detail as I need to, but I don't know if I'd really be contributing much to the overall drawing. So I think we could pretty much call it a day. Or maybe I'll stick around for a few more minutes to see if there are other lingering questions. But um, again, if you're new, this is uh, we're with Artist Network. I'm Scott, and we are drawing together. Check out artistnetwork.com. There's a link in the description for the drawing together pages where you can share your own work. Um, you know, share comments with others that have been um, working along. We're at, we've done over 30 of these episodes, so there's a lot that you can kind of go through. Uh, many of you have been going back to some of the beginning uh, episodes and creating some of those drawings. This has really kind of evolved over, um, over the last few months. I think what I want to do, maybe move this a little bit. Um, and all of those, uh, all of the, the videos in this, if you subscribe to artistnetwork.com, uh, there's the playlists that have all of these episodes. You're going to find the reference images in there as well as the materials that I'm using. Uh, so you can follow along if you'd like or just use it as inspiration. I always recommend people drawing from life as much as possible, but we do have these photos for you to use. Um, many of the photos I've taken myself, which I always encourage as well. So if you're working from photo references, try to do that as much as possible. Uh, for in this case, though, I did go to a site called Pixabay, which offers commercial use of um, of images. So that's where this one came from. But um, I think it's always best to try to take your own. It's a really good exercise to get into. Uh, so I appreciate it. We will um, uh, we will be back on Monday. We meet every Monday, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, Adele, you're asking, do you seal your drawings with what? You can use a spray fix it if, if you like. I don't typically do that, but I think that's really more just a personal preference. It can adjust the overall um, uh, the overall contrast in your work, so you just want to be a little bit careful with that. You know, find a good quality one. Um, you can also use uh, kind of like a mylar sheet in between them to help protect them. So what I do though, I mean, they're just kind of piling up as a stack and I just try to be careful with them. You know, the best thing to do, of course, if you have something that you really are, you want to keep um, preserved is to, uh, is to put it behind glass to try to try to get, grab a frame for it. But that's not often practical and I don't do that myself. So, um, but uh, it's all up to you. These, again, these, are, this is really an exercise for me because I'm trying to develop my skills. And so, um, this isn't something that I'm intending to hang up somewhere, but um, who knows? Maybe, maybe I will. Um, 
Uh, oh, so Heather, you're asking about the the Facebook video. I don't know. We're going to be discussing that. See if we're going to be doing more. Um, it seemed to to resonate with the audience, so we're going to kind of check that out here. Um, it's a bit difficult to keep up with all of the drawings here, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great um, platform to be using. I know for sure we're going to be continuing on with this here on our YouTube channel, though. Um, so kind of look for both. Um, really wonderful community that we've got here, and I appreciate all the encouragement, all the positive feedback, all the suggestions. Um, also, this goes up as a recording at the end, so if you want to watch the whole thing, you can. Uh, the, the recording chat field is a discretion, I mean, a discretion, a, 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 the discussion field is a great place to um, provide suggestions for, um, for future subjects that you want to see me draw. We're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be doing a sunset coming up. I want to try doing a bonfire. I think that's going to be a lot of fun because I have not um, drawn flames before, so that's going to be a, a real big challenge. Um, doing some additional still life work, more flowers coming up. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to post them in the chat field. But not under this one here. Wait for the recording to come up. I'll be more likely to see that. So um, I want to thank you all here. I'm going to do a quick check-in to see if there's additional um, questions here. I see some positive comments. Uh, people are asking how it's done. If you want to know how it's done, watch the video again. It goes up again as a recording. So um, hopefully this is uh, encouraging you all to to, to draw. Um, but again, this is it, it, for me. This is all an exercise to improve. You know, who knows? Some of these are not going to work. Some of them will. I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, it's, like I said at the beginning, this is a lot more fun than I anticipated it being. I thought it'd be a fun drawing to do, but um, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, so, um, but you may find some of the other subjects more more intriguing. Uh, so I encourage you to kind of challenge yourself in that way. If you're you look at a subject that you might think is kind of boring, try drawing it. It may bring new life to it. So, um, oh AOG, when you say sp spray fixatives, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so if anybody, if you want to try doing a spray fix, that generally works. Um, it'll hold it down. It's a, basically a spray adhesive type of product that just kind of fixes the charcoal on top of it. Um, so, but you just generally just want to be careful with it if you want to not have it get messed up. I think sheets of like a mylar in between is generally a good way to go. Um, Adele, yes, only def definitely buy more art supplies. That's it's tricky. It's addictive once you start buying art supplies. That's my go-to when I need a pick-me-up. I'll go to the art supply store and buy a new brush or something. So thank you all. I'm going to sign off for today. It's been a blast. I look forward to seeing you all again on Wednesday. Have a beautiful, I'm not, not Wednesday, uh, next Monday. So have a beautiful weekend and keep on drawing.